something, but I misheard it and thought it was Shatonya. Shatonya. <laughs> and thought that, that it's perfectly believable that there's yeah. a woman knocking around in like Detroit or something. Shatonya. Yeah, yeah, it is perfectly. Yeah, it's perfectly believable. That's fine. Okay, let's let's get off this road. Um, what else have you got to recommend for us this week? Um, a tapas restaurant in. <laughs> 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 Great, okay. Yeah. In Preston, called Mundo. I hope uh, you're paying attention to this Wally Frogmore, Paul Michael Craig, anybody. Mundo Tapas, so the people that do live in, in the <laughs> north of England, um, if you ever go to Preston for a show or whatever at the Guild Hall, right. um, or go and watch the snooker there or what have you, that like you might go and do, mm. um, there's a Tapas restaurant beneath in the precinct that now is developing a much more vibrant oh. bar and restaurant scene, actually, which is good to see. Mm. But um, yeah, called Mundo Tapas, and uh, Emma was querying whether it's a chain but I'm pretty sure when I went on the website it was only the Preston one so well, there you go. I think it is but we, we had a really nice time there. they had this crispy beef um, dish that was just on, try it just go and have it right just one, one so is it, is it is it typical tapas then or is it kind of like a fusion thing where you get different like Indian and Chinese and bits of it's, it's, it's Spanish right but this particular dish actually does it's, it's um, it sort of has almost like a Chinese feel to it in a weird way. Okay. The way they do the beef strips and they, I guess they breadcrumb them a little bit or something to add the crisp to them when they fry them. Right. But um, it's got Mediterranean vegetables, but all sliced very thin. Okay. And cooked in like a sweet sort of sauce. So it's sort of, you, yeah, it, honestly, it was amazing. Worth the trip then. Really enjoyed that. And what's that called? Mundo. Mundo Tapas, it's called. There you go, fair enough. And my final SLP recommends, um, it's another televisual one. I, um, as I've alluded to a couple of times during the show today, I, uh, I steal my Netflix um, from... from uh, she, know, well, she knows that we put it on for Erin, um, but my, uh, my ex-better half provided me with a password so that Erin could watch children's Netflix, and I also watch grown-up Netflix on, on her she's behalf. She's not aware of that, is she? And I think she's fully aware that I watch a lot of Netflix on her dollar, but it's not that expensive. Um, but what I have done um, in preparation for her discovering that um, is invested in Amazon Prime, which is the other one that runs alongside that. So yeah. that I can say to her, hey, well, you can have my Amazon Prime password then. This is the problem I have with these services, that there's multiple ones. Yeah. And it's like, there's shows you want to watch on all of them. And well, I'm not fucking paying six quid a go for each one of them. Because that's just, that's frustrating to me. Okay. Sky, just buy them all up, please, because I've already got a subscription to and that. Up Sky, yeah, exactly. Right, anyway, so on uh, on Amazon Prime, I'm watching Man in the High Castle, which yes. is the adaptation of the Philip K. Dick book about um, had the Nazis won the war. I really want to really really watch good. that it's one, yeah. Really it's been really good. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll keep the hook up. Right. I'll sort you out. But yeah, it's really, uh, really well done. Good stuff. Anything else from you? Um, just to say as well, on, on if you're in Preston and you've been to Mundo Tapas and you've been to watch the, uh, we don't have a broad show. enough audience for this to be. Go on, right? Anyway, in Preston, there's a bar called Cookie, which I'm sure we've oh, talked about before. Love Cookie, and I, and I would love to, for bars like this to exist all over the north because um, I'm sure nor- the northern folk would lap it up. But it's basically a cocktail bar mm-hmm. that plays indie music. Yeah, and it's all dark and dingy and. Brilliantly done. It's written, the bar staff really get into the tunes whilst they're mixing up the cocktails and stuff. It's, yeah. it's, and the bar staff are really, really good, actually, yes. at the job they do. Uh, the mixologists. That's, I just, that's what you call cocktail makers, isn't it? I don't know. Are they not just barmen? Is there a name for them? I just thought they were like good barmen. All right. Well, I thought they got called mixologists. A mixologist. Maybe mixologists are the ones that come up with new cocktails. And then bartenders, or bar staff, or bar men, or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, um, it is a predominantly male bar, male staffed bar actually. Right. Um, I don't know if that's because women can't make cocktails as well. I I'm certain know. it's not, Mark. Yeah. I'm certain it's just yeah. a coincidence. Definitely. And there's not like any sort of positive discrimination. See, you say this now, and then you know because of how many people listen to the podcast, someone in the higher echelons at Cuckoo will be listening to this and think, right, time for a bit of positive discrimination. Yeah, Let's yeah. get some. Uh, Let's get some girls behind the bar. But um, I went in and I was like, well, what beers do you do? Because I'd been already uh, out at the pub and then I had a beer with my tea and stuff. So I didn't really want to move on to cocktails necessarily. And um, he said, they only had a few lagers in bottles and I didn't fancy any of them. 
So I said, right, I'll get a cocktail. And, and he goes, well, if you like beers, there's this cocktail that actually has a bit of beer in. I was like, oh, no, no, you, you get me, you get, you kind of got me a bit misunderstood here. Right. Um, I like beer. That's yeah. my drink of preference. But if I'm going to have a cocktail, I want some girly as fuck. I want some, <laughs> I, I want some, a, that's a ludicrous colour in a tall glass with Go a big lad. straw, please. Fantastic. <laughs> so there you go. What did you have? Can you remember? Um, electric. Iced tea is one that they Ooh. do. It's like a, a blue one. Like a Long Island iced tea with curacao in it. Um, it's, it's got like bowls blue, I think, in it with the yeah. vodka and all that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really pay much attention to the ingredients. Um, right. Had a... Oh, one that they do with a wham bar in it. This is something... I'm glad you brought that. I'm glad you've, you, you've said this, that they do cocktails with wham bars in it. Because... I went on a staff night out a few weeks ago and like the guy that runs the sales department in our office who's obviously quite a well off chat was sort of, you know, paying for a few drinks and what have you and I arrived a little bit later than everyone else and um, he sort of caught my attention and said, oh Tom, order, order yourself a drink and I was like, fantastic, so I got myself a nice nice bourbon to sip on and uh, I went over and, to say thank you to him and he's quite a well-heeled chap and he's a, he's a bit of a flash arrow, do you know what I mean? He's a sales manager so he drives a Merc and you know, he's well turned out and what have you. And he turns round to meet me with this cocktail in his hand. And I'm not kidding, Mark. It was in like a pint, similar to the glass I'm holding in, in front of me now. So like a big San Miguel chalice. Like a big San Miguel chalice type thing. And uh, But it's pink and there's whipped cream on it and there's a stick of rock hanging out of it as well. And of course, I've got my, my whiskey man and he just fell to pieces thinking it was the funniest thing in the world. He was pretty pissed. But there's some weird... Things going on in cocktails out there that I don't fully understand. I don't yeah. want to drink with a stick of rock in it or a wham bar. Well, it's... the wham bar was just there for effect, but the drink itself was actually quite nice. It was right. like a, a lemony type situation. But I don't like how many of them have things like egg whites in it or one had lemon curd in it. And, really? And I just think I don't want a heavy cocktail and they sound right. like they're going to be difficult to drink. I want, I want something that's filtered through ice and... Uh, Sups quick and fruity. There you go. And then much. after that, I had another one that was like a strawberry. It was called a Roxanne. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's all I've got. Oh right. Well, that's me too. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I also want to talk about Twitter. You talked about Facebook at the top of the show and how grateful we are to our Facebook followers um, for their retweeting. We are closing in on three thousand Twitter followers. Are we? We are at two thousand nine hundred and forty-eight, as I recall. Wow. Let's have a push. So, now. what I want to do is encourage people to really share the shit out of us on Facebook, on uh, on Twitter, and let's get ourselves to three thousand and see so, if we can do it over the next couple of weeks. The most simple way to do that is when you listen to the show, go onto the page, retweet the pin tweet at the top. That's probably, if we've got to it in time, going to be for this show. Yes. And then, uh, yeah, get involved. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. So let's get ourselves over 3,000 Twitter followers. That is uh, that's phenomenal. That, yeah, uh, and then if you're also following us on Twitter, go over to Facebook and like the page. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're on Instagram, search for Super League Pod on Instagram. Oh, I hear, I hear from the wife that you've been doing a little bit of uh, picture bit dropping. Of well, that's it, yeah. We, what have um, you been throwing up? Just pictures of us at games and that sort of stuff? I, I, I did, the yeah. I mean, one, did that get I, the cut? What I did was I, I went back on and, and, and tried to hack it because I figured it would have the same password as, as, as other things that yeah. we've done, and it did. Um, so I had to do a lot of updating because Instagram has updated quite a bit. So I threw some older pictures of, of games that we'd been to up on there um, and I just intend to use it I, I was going to start like posting day to day stuff but it just turns into Tom's Instagram account then, and I'm not really asked about that um, so yeah what Facebook was going a bit that way Twitter, sorry Twitter was going a bit that way midweek with these videos well I just thought it was you know I'm joking I know but from that point of view it's nice to just kind of keep in touch with people and put stuff up there and it got oh, a yeah, bit yeah. of play didn't it but what Instagram's pictures and, and I posted a picture of my a beer on stopped at the pub for on the way over and went, I thought, I'm not doing that with it. So when we go to games and stuff and our experience of rugby league stuff comes up, then check us out on Instagram because we will start posting pictures and, and especially as we get to the end of the season when things like the grand final and the formations... So have I got to reinstall Instagram on my phone then? No, it's all right. I'll just post pictures when we go to games and stuff and take lots of shots and, and do it from there. But, you know... Forewarned is forearmed. If you want to follow us, we're at Super League Pod on Instagram. We're just at Super League Pod as well there. Yeah, yeah, it's just cool. Super League Pod on Instagram. Have a look. Okay. There you go. The, the other thing I was going to mention is, I don't know if you've seen League Weekly this week, but there's not. a bit of a ref's expose. Uh, there's an interview oh, with Thomason and Stokes. Yeah. Uh, worth checking out. And the second part of that is going to be in next week's paper, mm. uh, dragging it out, because obviously it's a reason to buy it over the other one. Yes. Because, um, you know... You need... 
these are quite interesting things that people want to be aware of. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say check that out and drop us any thoughts you have on that ahead of next week's yeah, show, we guys. Yeah, full discussion on that then. Yeah. Okay, well, that is episode 115 of the Super League Pod. Oh, if you want to email us with stuff, Tom. You're a motherfucker. Well, we talked about all the other stuff we didn't talk about email. Uh, Superleaguepod at gmail.com gmail. gmail. if you want to send us an email. A few people have been taking advantage of that to get in longer stuff, and it's, it's good, yeah. Can we say goodbye to the nice people now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we'll see you next time on the Super League Pod. Stanley Cowan scored a fine try. That will do it for the Super League Pod.